and then that's the moment where you have to sit back and say, okay, what's the next step? So the next step was finding out what surgeon, what place I was going to get it at. And you know, you scour, you scour the internet for hours, days at a time, trying to find the best option. So it's not in emergency situation with the ACL. Um, so you can do the research. So do the research, find the best person that's near you, the person who's done the most surgeries. Find the person who's got the most under their belt, um, who has the best recovery times. And you can always ask, too. Um, some things that you want to ask is, uh, what's your recovery rate? What's your success rate? What is the infection rate of that area or of uh, the infection rate of that clinic? And they'll tell you all these things. So you can do all your homework, find the best option, find the best place. So now you found the place. Now you found the guy. So we go in and they offer a couple different things. They have the uh, cadaver uh, graph that you can do. So pretty much they grab an ACL um, or some sort of similar structure fiber within some part of the body from a cadaver. The second option was the hamstring. So they grab a piece of the semi-tendinosis, which is the longer one. Um, it's a really long tendon that it has. And then they'll fuse, not fuse, but kind of sew together the membranosis and tendinosis to reform your hamstring. And then the third option that I had at the time was the patellar. So kind of going through all of them was the cadaver didn't have the highest acceptance rate. It was still like around 92%, but you know, let's round that to 90%, you know, um, to one in 10 chance that it's going to get rejected in my head. So then that was a no go for me. The hamstring graft was almost just as successful in the success rate as the patella, but you would lose about 20% of hamstring power in the process. So in my head was, well, is that 20% of power going to cause me to lose a match? Is it going to cause me that last second move, that last second push, that last second twist um, to not have enough mobility, range of motion or power? to be able to get out of a certain position and cost me a match. So my choice was to not leave that turn of doubt. So then the final one was the patellar graft. So they grab it from the patellar tendon and it's a really thick guy. So they go in, they grab it and they use it. So I'm going into surgery and I go under, you know, not a clue what's going on when I come up. You know, the whole usual thing, you see those videos of people uh, talking smack and I'm pretty sure I was talking smack to my dad in all honesty I was just you know I remember it and family denies it but I know I was um, you get out and then you really don't feel much for the first day so you can't fly anywhere for I think it was like two weeks at the time so we ended up driving home and slowly by slowly you know the pain starts settling in but mentally it wasn't settled in for me yet it was you know, you go from driving a Ferrari to all of a sudden being parked in the garage. You know, you still think you're a Ferrari at that point. You still are ready to compete mentally, but it hasn't hit you yet. Your body is out of commission, but, you know, you just lost an axle and you haven't replaced it yet. Um, so the first month was probably the most difficult. 